once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. So check it out. The D6 Squad has merch now. We got hoodies, tees, mugs, whatever you need. Check it out. Link in the description. What's going on YouTube? Biggie 546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. AJ Bouye is a free agent. He's been released, I'm pretty sure, by the Denver Broncos. Uh, he was a guy who was an undrafted free agent uh, to the Houston Texans. Played a couple of years there. Ended up being a really great corner. Uh, got to the Jaguars, signed a big deal with them, and was traded for a, first, for a fourth round pick to the Denver Broncos. And obviously that didn't work out. He ended his year with a six-game PED suspension that's going to carry over to whatever team he goes to. He's going to miss the first two weeks of the season. So that's one thing that you have to also consider when you think about bringing him in. Now, A.J. Bouye uh, was a really good corner. I mean, really good corner in Houston. Um, he was really good in Jacksonville when they had uh, that, that super defense. So he, he's a guy who was a really good corner. He's only 29 years old. So it makes you think what happened to him. Why is he falling off like this? Why is he getting traded for fourth round picks? And, you know, all of these all of these things of why, you know, why is he being let go the way he is? And um, I, I don't know. But uh, one thing that I will say is if A.J. Bouye is anything like he used to be, if he's, you know, 70 percent of, of the corner that he used to be, absolutely, absolutely, it's a go for the Giants to go out and try to sign him again. I'll try to say this in the future. Try to sign him. Because in free agency, you can't really say that the team did this because, you know, they, they didn't sign this person and they did a bad job in free agency. It's all about if the person wants to actually come to your team. So the Giants should try to sign A.J. Bouye. Um, I'm thinking that his, his market value should probably be somewhere between 5 to $8 million. Uh, If he gets more than that, I'll be surprised. But I think 5 to $8 million for your second corner would be solid. Uh, it would definitely shore up that secondary, and I think it will probably take uh, Sertain or Farley off the board, even though I think they have the potential to be better than Bouye uh, in their first couple of years. Then Bouye will be on this team. So um, I don't know if you want to go out and sign him and risk one of those corners falling to you, but you can't really have ever enough corners. So maybe they just still take that corner. Uh, no matter what they do in, in free agency. But I think A.J. Bouye is a plug-and-play starter across from James Bradbury. Darning Holmes did a great job in the slot over that you know second part of that season as he got better and more comfortable. And you got three corners right there locked in. That makes people like Ryan Lewis and Madre Harper and why can't I remember the other guy's name? All of the guys that we plugged in at corner across from James Bradbury – that makes them, you know, a fourth option. If they're the fourth corner, then we've upgraded tremendously because that goes from your second corner to your fourth corner. He's going to be, you know, going against those, you know, fourth wide receivers who, you know, probably spend time on special teams. So that would tremendously help the defense and tremendously, tremendously help the secondary. Uh, you're going to have Xavier McKinney, Logan Ryan, Jabril Peppers back there. James Bradbury had a great season. Donnie Holmes, as I said, looked good. And then add in A.J. Bouye, who at the very worst you think is going to be a league average second corner. So all of those underneath, um, you know, all of those routes that went to the second corner, they're going to stop. They're going to, I mean, he's not going to shut down that side of the field, but he's going to limit that. And if you throw at him too much, he's going to start picking some of those guys, some, some of those passes off. So A.J. Bouye would be a solid signing for us. I really think he would be. And uh, it, it just all just comes down to the numbers. It really does. Um, the only thing is the PEDs, you're going to miss them for the first two games. So that might, that really might take some teams out of it because in a, in a division like the NFC East and when your team is not so far away from me mediocrity where you were 6-10 and 10 last year, which is basically, you know, a couple of games out of 8-8, eight and eight, which is completely 500. You cannot afford to lose games, you know, to wait for a guy to come back. A good team, you know, a solid team that knows they're going to be in the playoffs, they can afford to just take two games off at the start of the season 
and you know really not have to deal with the consequences but the Giants missing two games missing your top corner or your second corner for the first two games could actually hurt the team I mean I would be interested to see who we play those first two games it might not matter as much but uh, it could definitely hurt the team we you know we could definitely go the other route and take that corner in the first round uh, maybe you know you say instead of paying AJ Bouye 8 million instead of paying him 10 million which I mean I don't think he'll get but it's possible you know he's a former you know top tier kind of corner instead of giving him 8 to 10 million how about we save that 8 to 10 million you know throw it at Curtis Samuel uh you know I don't really want this guy but throw it at Corey Davis or Curtis Samuel or maybe you just you know bank that and you 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 use it to go towards a Kenny Galladay or even a Chris Godwin who a lot of people don't want because he's a slot but Shep can play on the outside and Chris Godwin can be your number one receiver from the slot that's just my opinion but um you know that's, that's what I'm thinking about but uh you could go after someone like him I'm not really a fan of Juju Smith Schuster because I don't like all the dancing in the video and you know all of this extra curricular activities but um Kenny Galladay, Allen Robinson, this money can go towards a lot of those top tier receiver free agents. As you're going to see me steer a lot of these free agency con con conversations right back to the wide receiver position. Because you could pocket that money, put it towards that wide receiver position, sign a guy who's maybe not as known, who can step up and be that second corner. You know, who you pay $4 million to instead of $8 million or $7 million. And the you know with that 11 pick in the draft if all three of those wide receivers are gone and you don't you know you're not a fan of drafting a tight end that high and you're not a fan of taking Rashad Bateman that high then you can look at Patrick Sertain then you can look at Caleb Farley who I think can both be all pro type corners those two corners are both I think 6'2 if they're both they both can run and they both you know can really you know match up with most of these receivers in the league so even jc horn is a good corner so you got a lot of corner talent at the top of that draft it's just all about are the giants all in on taking that receiver at 11 no matter what because at that point even if the top three fall they're going to go either kyle pitts or rashad bateman um if you know if none of them if none of them fall then that's that's just how that's going to go but uh if you know, one of them were to fall, and you take someone like A.J. Bouye, it really lets you take that receiver. But passing on Farley and passing on uh, Patrick Sertain, to me, would be a mistake for a guy who's probably a one-year rental. And then you think that that's not really going to help you in, you know, in the long term or in the, in the short term because we need long-term help and short-term help. So if A.J. Bouye is your one-year option, and then you say that the value is too much, so I'm going to take Sertain and Farley here. That means you have your first round pick possibly not starting or possibly not being a second corner, you know, for the first year, which means you really did not improve much. You, you drafted a fourth corner or a third corner. So we need immediate improvement. And I think the best way for that to happen is attacking the receiver position in free agency because you immediately know that that receiver is going to be a viable target for DJ. And then taking that money that you would take to sign uh, one of these top tier two kind of corners and draft certain, draft Farley. If they're not there, continue to add on to the receiver position. So those are my thoughts on the AJ Bouye uh, kind of situation. Uh, would I be mad if the Giants signed him? No. I'd be actually pretty happy if the Giants signed him. But I just provided just a different, you know, a different avenue, a different path that they could take if they weren't to sign, if they didn't want to sign them. But if they do sign them, the money is always you're able you're always able to find money, you know, in the cap. You're always able to move things around to be able to sign someone. So if we sign AJ Bouye, the top receiver isn't off the board, but uh, it definitely it may affect what we do at number eleven with Farley and Certain. It really could affect that. So you guys let me know what you think of this entire situation of the corner at number 11 of AJ Bouye and uh, the receiver position. Let me know. So if you made it this deep into the video, I'm calling you a D6 squad member. If you're a D6 squad member, you got to hit that subscribe button. 
you got to turn on that notification bell and listen. I make all kinds of content for NFL teams. So if you're not a Giants fan, don't worry. I'll cover your team. If I'm not covering your team, let me know and have a good one.